On this week's episode of the Maz Hakim podcast, we have a real life Spice Girl <laughs> in the house. It's everyone's favourite Spice Girl, oh. Emma Bonson. Good. Hello. Woo-hoo. How are you? I'm so good. Baby Spice. Good. Baby Spice. Yes. So good. You know, Baby I. Baby Spice. Um, yes. It's yeah. still. It's, it's still. Yeah. It still works, hopefully. Still, do people still call you Baby Spice? <laughs> they do, yeah. And I, I think I, I like the name. I think I got the best one. <laughs> yeah, you really did. And you still look so incredibly oh, it's young. funny. I was saying that earlier. I do get a little bit concerned. You know, when I get older, obviously, and people are like, oh, that used to be Baby Spice. You know, yes. that's going to be a bit <laughs> of a worry. Um, but, you know, at the moment, I feel all right. Yeah, it's all good. It's like it's like Benjamin Button. You're reversing <laughs> backwards. Um, but it's such a pleasure to have you in the studio, Emma, um, because, honestly, you are such an absolute icon. I mean, I remember in every talent quest, um, I was obsessed with the Spice Girls, so I would dress up as oh, Baby Spice. Yes. <laughs> Were you? Were yes, you ba- oh, I was I Baby Spice. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So you were an icon and you were part of one of the biggest bands in the world. And at one point, you reached the highest level of fame. Like, it was crazy. The Spice Girls were absolutely everywhere. How does that level of fame change a person? Because not everyone gets to experience that. No, I mean, it is a it is a very unique experience. Um, and I felt very lucky that I had friends, you know, the, the other girls, we had each other's back and we looked after each other it all happened really fast as well which Mm -hmm. um which now looking back it's kind of like wow we were only kind of you know in traveling the world for a few years and it made such an impact which was really special um but i think i was so lucky as as i said to have the girls to have really tight-knit family so as soon as i came home it was back to you know being daughter and and sister and you know making my bed and just doing those (laughs) normal things so i think i just had luckily had a great balance of Mm -hmm. friendship and family surrounding me so um i was actually they gave me uh they uh, that lift to just enjoy that moment and then I'd come home and yeah as I said be back to you know daughter sister friend it was that was normality that's how I dealt with everything I think did it feel like a dream or like because that was a stage of your life that was it was just crazy or or did you go through that and kind of live every moment and every second sometimes it felt like a dream other times it felt like the hard you know hard hard work because we traveled so much and um you know not much sleep and into studios and you know crazy so uh again it had it had two things but I think the the being away from home was the hardest for me I was very close with my family so traveling uh sometimes was it was tough but yeah very dreamlike I mean it is it was a dream to yes. be part of of that and um and for people to, to get it as well yes. i think i think they related to it so much that exactly. actually we were five pretty normal girls kind of living our dream and mm-hmm. um getting up there and performing and having like and but the thing is the other thing that people do we wrote all our songs as well so we yes. wrote every lyric and you know so we it was it was us it was mm-hmm. you know it was all us mm-hmm. i love that and and i feel like you're all so incredibly grounded and still are and even at that point i think that's why for example the average teenager also could really you know relate and that's why i could relate as well in front yeah. of my mirror dancing <laughs> <I know. laughs> the spice Girls song. yeah i think it was definitely relatable i mean i yes. fell over on stage so many times oh my I gosh just, really like, mumbling kind of um, <laughs> so it was all new to me too, but i just yeah it was, it was magic, obviously, and we brought something that I think people needed. Yeah. You know, we kind of lifted and empowered people and it was, yes. you know, I think it was a it was a good energy. And that was before the crazy world of social media. Yeah, you know. which I'm so glad about. Yes. So, yeah. You know, uh, being on stage and people kind of with their phone cameras and you've got little skirts on, you know. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> so I'm glad it was kind of before Exactly. <laughs> You know, um, I recently interviewed Robin Sharma, who's the author of The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari in the 5am Club. And he said, adversity builds mastery and that we must go through difficult times to become the person we are. What do you think some of the tough times in your life were that really shaped you? 
I think the thing is in life, I think everybody is on their own journey and we all go through tough times and they're relative really, aren't they? Yes. They're kind of how you feel or how you take them on board. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I've had times, you know, in life that have uh, been harder than others or that I've, I've struggled with. But I think it yeah it all depends on how you kind of take that on and i as i said before i've just had i've had the best support in life and i feel so lucky for that yes. um and i think that's the way i've kind of got through those things right is there anything in particular that you can think of for example that like when i spoke to jason derulo he was like he said it was before he started off his career and of all the doors that closed in his face before, mm. you know, he was starting out. Mm. Is there anything in particular you can think of or? I mean, the main thing for me, obviously, growing up, um, you know, ha having very little in the in the way of, uh, you know, material yes, things humble, or, or not having, humble, yeah. you know, that. Um, but I had so much love from parents that, yes, you know, we did struggle um yeah. food wise or you know but the the love obviously completely takes over that um yeah. and you do look back on that and uh, but I think it's taught me obviously that you have to work for everything and yeah. uh and I never take anything for granted mm -hmm. ne I never take anything for granted because I feel very lucky you know where uh, where I've got to and and how that's happened and through you know my fa family support is and that's the reason really I'm from an Afghan background and I get that you know we were taught on the dinner table every day be grateful because not everyone gets those same opportunities and yeah. so you know I, I understand that humble beginnings but look at you now it's it's crazy right I you, know you Feel are the dream <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been an absolute dream and and also doing things that I absolutely love and trying yes. new things and mm -hmm. growing and, you know, and just that's that's been a wonderful thing for me. Absolutely. Um, so we mentioned before, obviously, Baby Spice, you're so youthful and young still and so beautiful and you literally oh, do you. not age. What are some tips, oh, I Baby Spice? <laughs> I have. I have. No, you really haven't. <laughs> what are some tips, Baby Spice, on, on how to stay young? Oh, um, oh, my goodness. So uh, I've taken lots of tips from other people. And I think <laughs> it's lots of, you know, try and keep hydrated, sleep, yes. um, which you know, I know parents, we don't get that much of anymore. But, <laughs> um, and I think natural products is really important. I've always used sunscreen. Yes. Um, and yeah, just looking after yourself. I think uh, yeah. like I'm sure everyone says, but that would be my main thing looking after yourself sleep and and keep hydrated absolutely and sun and skin care skin care yeah. yeah and sun cream yes uh, especially in dubai we need that a lot using sunscreen i mean anywhere really absolutely i mean i, I we, it rains at home all the time but i still yes. put sun cream on exactly. <laughs> just maybe that's just for the hope exactly. of sun <laughs> for the overcast days yeah um, Emma, what are some books you would recommend to people for success or life or growth? I am totally, I mean, as a parent, I wish I had more time uh, to read. <laughs> um, I love the podcast, obviously. Yes. You know, um, uh, there's uh, Fern Cotton who does A Happy Place, which is a gorgeous um, a podcast. But also, I love, I do love female authors. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I tend to kind of take myself out of that w world and just I love a drama or you know yes. when I'm reading I think just take me away from it all there's a uh, I read a, a woman called Jane Fallon who's got a comedian husband at home yes. so I think that female author Eminent. I quite yeah. like when I'm reading or I get that time and space away and that little bit of kind of yeah, I, that's what I escape. like. Escape. I yeah, love escapism that. Escapism is quite important, I think. Yeah. Staying in that feminine, divine sort yes. of energy. Yes. Um, speaking of the feminine, divine energy, how has motherhood, do you think, changed you as a person and what kind of challenges have you faced as a mum? Um, oh, well, for me, being a parent is my priority. It's yes. it's what I live for. It's what I work for. Um, they're my everything. So... Um, uh, how has it changed? I, I mean, obviously, it changes you hugely. You don't, you're not, uh, you can't be selfish anymore. <laughs> um, everything is about someone else. You wake up in the morning and it's first thing on your mind. Um, but 
I think everyone again everyone has their own struggles but I just feel like I've felt so lucky to you know have two adorable uh, children um, I think the struggle of watching them grow up and get you know too big too quickly yeah, you're like slow down it's slow down please I want them to just be home all the time yeah. um, I think I'm the needy one in our family <laughs> <laughs> I'm like stay with me you don't need to go anywhere yeah. um, so I do struggle with that a little bit I think because I'm yes. so attached attached to them yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really gonna I think my, as they get older that's where I'm gonna really struggle I mean yes. the, I can't bear the thought of them driving I can't bear the thought of them going off and you know and moving into their own home <laughs> that's that is gonna be my time of struggle right so I'll come back okay. <laughs> tell you about that and uh, and some learning lessons as a mum I guess uh, patience, yes. uh, making sure uh, that everything is in place. Um, you know, you definitely have to have much more of a schedule. I love kind of back in the day living, you know, day by day, but yes. that can't happen anymore. <laughs> um, I have to have a diary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're the things I've learned along the way. Yeah. My, my sister, she lives in London and she has a three-year-old. And uh, we recently went on holidays and I haven't been around a three-year-old for a while. So, oh, yes. so he That's... wakes up at 5.30 yeah. and at 6 o'clock, like he would push up. It was the most adorable thing. He'd push the door open and uh, I'm like, wow, everybody's awake. It's like 6 o'clock in We're the morning. We're all up and ready to go and they don't stop. <laughs> they don't stop. <laughs> You're thinking they must be tired now. Yes. They must need a nap. No, that doesn't happen. Yeah, the three year, yeah, that kind of uh, toddler Era. age is a tough one. Yes. Uh, but it keeps you busy. I quite like that. It keeps you busy. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adorable. Um, and so congratulations on Kit and Kin. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful initiative. What inspired you to make this beautiful natural skincare brand for kids? Thank you so much. I'm so proud of it. I'm, I, I'm totally inspired by my children. And the fact is um, I had two children with, um, uh, they had a skin problem. Right. A, when they were babies mm -hmm. and I found it very difficult to find a brand that um, I could trust firstly yes. that didn't have uh, a million ingredients on the back mm -hmm. that I didn't understand and I wasn't sure what I was putting on them so um, <laughs> I found that very very difficult and mm -hmm. um uh, and meeting a, a wonderful man called Christopher Money, who's my business partner, we met through a mutual friend, and um, he ha we had so much in common. He had the same thing: um, a child with with skin problem, and we just couldn't find anything. And we, you know, so that is when Kit and Kin was born. We um, came together, we worked on skin the skin line, um, and he is just brilliant has so much knowledge in the whole nappy world and uh, we work together on designs for that and yes. it is the most accredited eco nappy on the planet which right. I, we're just so proud of mm -hmm. um, but it also does the job mums and dads yes. um, it's, <laughs> you know even though it looks fantastic and it's 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 got great design it also does the job it's soft it's gentle on our baby's bottoms it's you know which is very important obviously for us yes. parents and the skin line is all natural mm -hmm. um and uh, we also have um, a baby wear, which is organic cotton. Um, so, yeah, we've worked really hard on it. Yes. And it's it's become this beautiful brand that we're now in 30 countries. Wow. Uh, we've won 42 awards. Oh, my god! I mean, I just feel so proud and so lucky and, and a great business partner and a team that yes. have put so much into it. And, um, yeah, we... It, we, we love it. It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful brand. That's so beautiful. And also so wholesome. And Kit and Kin gives so much back, which I absolutely love, so much back to the world. Can you tell us a little bit about the initiatives? Absolutely. At, right from the start, uh, Chris and I had always talked about better for baby, better mm -hmm. for our world, and giving back. They were the three key points. And uh, we have a Kit and Kin Foundation. Uh, so when you subscribe to Kit and Kin, uh, you yourself will be saving five trees uh, in the rainforest. Mm -hmm. And so, of course... Uh, to this date, we have we have you know saved thousands and thousands of acres at the rainforest. Yes. We also um, uh, help with healthcare mm -hmm. um, um, around that community, and also we give a scholarship um, to children to have the materials to go to school if uh, if that wouldn't have been possible uh, oh. beforehand. So um, yeah, it's a great giving, and you know 
they, this is what parents are doing. Just by buying their essentials mm-hmm. that we need, um, they are um, supporting this amazing foundation as well. So, and I, I speak to parents and they're like, it's so nice because I'm just buying my nappies for my kids and I'm giving back because it's so difficult. Come on, we've all got so much on yes. our minds, especially as parents, mm-hmm. that we ho- we'd like to think that we could help a little bit. Mm-hmm. So they're like, great, I just buy my nappies and I'm, I'm helping the planet. So uh, yeah, that's been a wonderful feedback from them. Honestly, congratulations for it all. I can't wait to hit the stage with you Thank shortly. You, yes, <gasps> we're going to hit the stage. It's going to be really great. How have you loved Dubai so far, by the way? Oh, I've Is loved it? it. I have been here quite a few times. Yes. I come with my children. Uh, we've had some wonderful times here. And it's also nice this time around, I've come with my girls. Okay. And so we get to hang out. And it, 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 wonderful. Food. I've never had a bad meal here. The food yes. is exquisite mm-hmm. the sun is shining and at home it's absolutely teeming down <laughs> uh, so I, feel, I just feel very lucky I'm, I'm living my best life <laughs> yes baby skirt of spice <laughs> You do yes. that. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time Thank and you. your energy. And uh, yeah, I'll see you shortly. Absolutely. On stage. Thank you very much. 